This episode of the show brought to you by Best Fiends Forever. Do you like app games? Oh no, the voices are bad! Well, then you should play Best Fiends Forever! Play on the floor! Play in the shower! You can even play in the dark! Play next to the fridge! Never go hungry again! You can even play! While you're playing! How am I doing this?! Best Fiends Forever is a new game in the Best Fiends trilogy! It has the same characters and story, but it's a totally different kind of game! In this clicker-style adventure game, you go as far as you can, as fast as you can! And that means slapping your way to victory, leveling up as many things as you could possibly think of! Collecting coins, yes! Collect them all! Download now for free in the description down below! I think it finally came! It's my very own music box! Looks good! Alright, we'll open it! What about Mario the Music Box? I'm a little surprised that Mario the Music Box wasn't at least uh, mentioned. What? Mario the Music Box should be on the slip. Mario the Music Box! I'm surprised that Mario- Mario Music Box- Okay! We'll talk about it! We'll talk about Mario the Music Box! Oh great, and there goes the power! Come on! Come on! Oh! It's, it's pretty dark in here. I think I can uh, flip the switches and get it going again. If not, I have, I have a generator, so I'll just, I'll just use a generator. I'm gonna turn that on now. <laughs> got it. Well, uh, at least I got some things going again, namely my computer. And that's great because apparently I have to play Mario the Music Box. So if you missed my last video on Creepy Mario games, apparently I made the mistake of not including a fan favorite game that goes by the name of Mario the Music Box. A fan made RPG Maker XP game with an actual team of creators and supporters behind it. It's supposed to be a pretty creepy game as well, and since it's Halloween, I figured why not check it out together. Now this is the first time I've ever seen or heard of the game before, and it's not often that the comment section of my YouTube video shows me something totally new. The idea of a polished RPG Maker game is admittedly intriguing, even though it's not a new concept these days. But personally, and especially considering that I used to mess around in some of these old RPG Maker softwares myself, this seems right up my alley. I even used to burn a lot of CDs that had the assets and games on them so that I could put them on new computers and play and make new games. But with the limitations of RPG Maker, can the game really invoke a modern horror experience? Let's find out. By playing it. The game starts and we're asked if we want to see a movie intro. Oh, a movie intro? You know I like movies in my video games. It's a song? The intro's a song? What? Is this an anime? Is is Mario an anime? <laughs> this can't be! That's impossible! The real game picks up with Mario wandering down a path and arriving at a mansion. Right away you can tell that some real effort is put into this game. There's lots of interjecting hand-drawn scenes that add so much more depth and focus to what's going on. Something as simple as Mario pulling out a map is so much more immersive with these cool additions. It's locked. There might be something around here I can pry it open with. Mario breaking and entering, now in stores near you! 
Don't forget to press spacebar rapidly to gain access with your rusty crowbar. The crowbar broke. So we break into the mansion and explore around a little bit, eventually getting to the only lit room in the house. And inside we find an interesting looking music box. <laughs> Mamma mia! I can't see anything. Ouch. Ouch. Apparently there's something mega up with this music box and now we're trapped inside the mansion. And it seems the front door out of the mansion has mysteriously disappeared. The, the, the door? This is impossible. How could this even happen? I can think of three reasons this could happen. One, never mind. So now we have to wander around the mansion looking for clues and possibly finding an alternate way out. Okay, I'll just start by checking out these different rooms and then... Oh, it's gonna be one of those games. Yeah, Mario the Music Box takes after the Silent Hills Alone in the Dark and Resident Evils of the past. You're stuck inside a mansion or area and you're essentially exploring and gathering up key information to progress the story. It is survival horror and the survival part is not taken lightly. You're gonna die. A lot. Sometimes you just die by looking at a thing, like a door. Other times you just pick the wrong decision. <laughs> What was that? I hear it coming closer. I gotta hide somewhere fast. I'll hide in the crate. <laughs> Should I check if it's still there? Oh yeah, Mario, the first thing you do, the first thing when you hear a creepy scream is to come out of hiding. We all know that. <laughs> Who is that? He he he, I found you. I told you, Mario! Also, what? Who is this guy? This sort of thing is going to happen a lot. You're in a dangerous situation, and if you choose the wrong option, you die. I get that it's sort of a necessary thing when it comes to these types of games, but sometimes you're way into the game or past multiple decisions, and you have no idea if what you're doing is the right thing. Investigation is literally the only thing you can do in this game. So naturally, that means you gotta look at stuff. Look at the thing to get an item. Look at the books to read a book. Play the creepy piano music for the ghost girl. Just normal mansion stuff. One of the first things that comes up in this line of thinking is that curiosity killed the cat. But at the same time, you're trapped here and you gotta look at stuff to do things. And sometimes those things just kill you and I don't think that's fair. There's nothing to necessarily indicate that anything is bad. Everything can be bad. We're in a spooky mansion and we picked up a music box that self winds and Mario's having a bad day. I mean, at least you can save the game, so after you do anything, you should probably save it, but having three files is still not enough. Because there's just so much going on and so many ways to die. I shouldn't be too hard on the game, though. What Mario game can you play that has Mario walk into a freezer, get trapped inside, and then slowly realize he's going to die by freezing to death? It, it's so hard to breathe. I, I can survive. I just, I just have to wait a little longer. So someone will find me. I, I know it. L Luigi will notice, I'm sure. He'll he'll find me. Wrong. Also ghosts. But you're wrong. I mean, I, I can relate. One time I was outside and it was cold. Also ghosts. Maybe not the ghosts. So we're trapped inside the mansion now, and the only thing we can do is keep exploring to find anything that can help us progress. There are some music sheets laying around, so we start to collect those. Hmm, I know there has to be something useful here. Found music sheet. I wonder what it's doing in an odd place like this. Oh no, Mario, get out of there. I got a bad feeling about this. Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. Wait, whoops. Oh god. After narrowly avoiding death, we find a little girl's room. Inside, we find a paper doll, and just outside the bookcase, we find some journal entries that key us into what's going on around the mansion a little bit more. Also, this bed right here, don't sleep on it. It's a trap. If you do, Mario wakes up in a coffin. That's just a tragedy, with no Ryan Reynolds to keep you company either. After collecting some of the piano music sheets, you can play a song on the piano, and when you do, a ghostly girl comes and asks you to collect the rest of her music sheets for her. So we search around for those, but uh-oh, we go into another room and there's a creepy girl with some scissors. Uh, nice girl. Not a nice girl! Not a nice girl, Mario! Get out of here, Mario! <sighs> Guess I'll go back in now. Luckily, she's not there when we pick up the last music sheet and a pair of scissors from her chest of scissors. She just has a chest of, of scissors? Okay. 
Heading back towards the main hall, we end up in a library and have to spend some time reading up on the lore of the paranormal, and we find some journals or accounts of what possibly has been happening in the mansion. From what we know so far, there was a family here that lost their child. People have gone missing here, and it's pretty much unsolved to this day. Based on the different journal entries that we found so far, it seems like the woman who is writing them has slowly descended into more and more of an abused state after falling madly in love with another man. We keep progressing through the mansion and eventually end up in the master bedroom where we find another journal entry. Something happens and it seems like Mario suddenly possessed by a force driving him insane. I'll, I'll kill all of you. I'll kill you. Uh, I'll kill you. I'll kill you. I'll kill you. I'll kill you. Enter Luigi! Yup, as it turns out, Mario isn't the only playable character in the game. And now as Luigi, we have to find Mario while exploring the rest of the mansion. Oh wait, there he is. Easy peasy. Mario? Mario? Mario! Slowly but surely, we end up uncovering some pretty nasty things, like dead bodies for one. And not only that, but the mansion keeps playing tricks on us as we keep seeing horrific things like Mario being dead or walking around slowly. You know, I must admit that the atmosphere of the game is pretty creepy. Even the music's dark tones keep you on edge while you're helplessly exploring the mansion. Eventually, we end up on the rooftop and share a heartfelt scene with Mario. And then Mario jumps off. That wasn't the, the real Mario, was it? After a while, we gain control of Mario again and find out that there's another person in the mansion named Reba. Wait, 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 wait. There's another guy in the mansion? Suspicious! I'm suspicious of you! You're suspicious! I'm suspicious! This whole thing is suspicious! Well, I mean, I guess I don't really know. He could be a good guy. So we team up with Reba, and we have to play as Reba to help Mario. But I'm still suspicious of him. Ah, Mario, what are you doing? Oh yeah, he looks normal. What's wrong, you're scared of me? I uh, guess actually. <laughs> Get away from me, Mario! Caught you. <laughs> so it seems like Mario may actually be the bad guy. <laughs> What's going on? Or at least he's possessed in some way, which gives him no control over what he's doing. I mean, let's be real for a second. Mario doesn't usually say stuff like this. Oh yeah, at some point he also picked up a knife. I forget where he got that. This is kind of when the game starts to get a little bit ridiculous with the deaths. I find myself loading and reloading frequently because I didn't know what was really going on or what I should be doing. To be fair, that sort of thing is kind of hard to convey when you're literally exploring a dark mansion. But this part, where Mario chases you, screw this. I probably dived like 20 times on this because I had no idea what to do. Turns out you have to go to the other side of the door and then immediately turn around and lock the door. By the way, there's no indication at all that that's what you're supposed to do. It's just what you're supposed to do. This only gives you a slight moment of reprieve though, as you now have to find a place to hide, and this, this is the type of stuff I'm talking about. There's plenty of ways to die just in this one part. You hide in the wrong place, you die. You don't hide at all, you die. And even when you pick the right place to hide, there's still a chance that you pick the wrong choice and die anyway. But at the same time, I'm afraid to save because I don't know if I'm stuck or about to die anyway. Ugh, how many more times do I have to see this scene? After you've played it so many times, it sort of loses its luster and switches to more of an annoyance. But to its credit though, experiencing how the characters can all die in these horrific ways does really add to the game as a whole, even if I don't personally like replaying the scenes so many times. It adds tension to every situation because you know you might die. And don't forget, there's lots of ways to die. Once you know how to get past a lot of these more tedious parts of the game, you can play it again pretty quickly, and you might want to because depending on what you do throughout the game, you'll get about five different endings. And for an RPG Maker XP game, that's pretty nuts and ambitious. I don't really want to give away too much more of what's going on because I do think that the game is really worth checking out. The game really can be creepy and disturbing at times, and it's actually pretty impressive what Team Ari has managed to accomplish considering the limitations of something like RPG Maker. Oh! The power's back on! Maybe now we can actually take a look inside the music box.
What, what the heck? This isn't a music box. This is just Mario. Man, now I gotta go through the hassle of, like, shipping it all back. Mario. Where'd you get that knife, Mario? Where'd you get that knife, Mario? <laughs> Mario! <laughs>